Happy Monday, Discovery Learners! It is I, Teacher Liz, here with another episode of Ability to Learn on the Discovery Day program. Today, I'll be sharing with you some cool observances, interesting history, cool facts, cool animals, and plants. And let's not forget, there's a new Spanish word to learn and a new place to explore this week. And also, don't forget to log in every day to the live Zoom sessions provided every day by the Discovery Educational Team. Now let's not delay any further, let's start the show. And now for today's observances. Hello and happy Monday, Discovery Learners! Teacher Lives here with another episode of Ability to Learn for today, Monday, August 30th, 2021. Our first observance, National Toasted Marshmallow Day. Mmm, I love toasted marshmallows. On August 30th, National Toasted Marshmallow Day celebrates one of America's fire-roasted treats. Be sure to stock up on marshmallows so you can celebrate. Get your friends together and gather up some firewood. Grab a few long sticks and a bag of marshmallows. Then make plans for a great night. Toasted marshmallows are a special part of summer evenings around the bonfire. Also, what a better way to kick off a long weekend than enjoy a delicious warm gooey toasted marshmallow. Add a pair of graham crackers and a chocolate bar and ask for s'more. Depending upon personal preference, Heat marshmallows to various degrees. Some of them get gently toasted. Others look more charred on the outer layer. Charring a marshmallow is simple. Hold it into the flame until the sugar catches fire, then carefully blow it out. It's important not to wave it around as you can only fan the flames. Marshmallows also come in a variety of flavors and sizes for maximum toasting opportunities. For a fun alternative, try roasting marshmallow peeps. But be sure you watch them closely, as the granule sugar coating will burn more quickly. Believe it or not, marshmallows dig back to ancient Egypt. The mallow plant provided a sap that the Egyptians used to create candy and nuts with honey. Wow, who knew this treat was ancient? So how do we observe Toasted Marshmallow Day? Well, that's easy. Toast up some marshmallows and enjoy. Have a marshmallow toasting competition. See who makes the best toasted marshmallows in your circle of friends. So how do you plan on celebrating Toasted Marshmallow Day? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Our next observance is a bit of a serious one. National Grief Awareness Day. On August 30th, National Grief Awareness Day recognizes the time it takes to heal from loss doesn't have a prescribed course. And as a reminder, closure comes in many forms. When a loved one dies, the void they leave behind affects everyone differently. Throughout the day, take stock of those in your life who have been affected by a form of loss. The death of a loved one, a close friend, or enduring an extreme change in their lifestyle can trigger grief. When we lose the stability of shelter, or a job, or a routine that we've known for years, we suffer a type of loss that requires closure. Some adjust to these changes easily, and others take time to become familiar with the new routines. Offer to listen to a friend, or ask them to join you for a coffee or tea. Send a message letting them know that they are never far behind in your mind. Then set a date for another visit. If you find you are suffering from grief, know that it's natural. You're not alone and it's okay to ask for help if you feel the grief is overwhelming. So how do we observe Grief Awareness Day? Look for signs of grief in yourself and your loved ones. Self-care is vital. After enduring a loss, there's no shame in seeking assistance with grief if their pain becomes overwhelming. Have you ever lost a loved one or maybe had a really difficult change in your life? If you like, you can go ahead and share your story in the comment section below. And our last observance for today is National Beach Day. Woo! Who doesn't like going to the beach? National Beach Day on August 30th celebrates all the sandy beaches across the nation. It also provides an opportunity to help keep those relaxing places clean so we can continue to enjoy them for long into the future. 
Whether we spend time on beaches, oceanside, or a lake or river, they provide recreation all summer long. Swimming, water sports, and sunbathing are just a few of the relaxing things that come to mind. We also enjoy playing frisbee, volleyball, and long walks. Floating along the surf in a hot summer day with friends creates summer memories we remember for years to come. Sometimes, just packing a few icy beverages and a good book is enough to make a beach day perfect. However, we are responsible for caring for the beach too. Not only should we pack out what we pack in, but it is necessary to follow the beach rules. Also, safety and fun go hand in hand. So, how do we observe National Beach Day? Well, when it comes to swimming at the beach, the American Red Cross provides excellent tips. They are as follows. 1. Swim only when a lifeguard is present, and only in designated areas. 2. Go with a buddy. Never swim alone. 3. Watch for currents, moving water, and riptides. These occur in oceans, lakes, and rivers. 4. Swim within your depth. Don't swim longer than you physically are capable of doing. 5. Take swimming lessons. And 6. Learn CPR. It could come in handy, especially during an emergency. And you know what else you could do at the beach? You can toast some marshmallows at the fire pits. Swim all day and roast some marshmallows at night. What a perfect day. Do you like going to the beach? And if you do, which one do you usually frequent? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Now I understand some of us can't go to the beach. So here's 30 seconds of visual and audio sensory you can use to pretend you're at the beach. Go ahead, sit back, and enjoy. and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history. Today, in 1968, the first record released on Apple label in the UK is the Beatles single, Hey Jude. Hey Jude is a song by the English rock band The Beatles that was released on a non-album single in August 1968. It was written by Paul McCartney and credited to the Lennon-McCartney partnership. The single was The Beatles' first release on their Apple record label and one of the first of four singles by Apple's roster of artists, marking the label's public launch. Hey Jude was a number one hit in many countries around the world and became the year's top selling single in the UK, the US, Australia, and Canada. Its nine week run at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 tied the all time record in 1968 for the longest run at top of the US charts, a record it held for nine years. It has sold approximately 8 million copies and is frequently included in the music credits list of greatest songs of all time. Apple Records is a record label founded by the Beatles in 1968 as a division of Apple Corps LTD. It was initially intended for a creative outlet for the Beatles, both as a group and individually, plus a selection of other artists including Mary Hopkin, James Taylor, Badfinger, and Billy Preston. In practice, this roster had become dominated by the mid-70s with the release of the former Beatles as solo artists. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Ted Williams. Born August 30th, 1918 in San Diego, California. 
This American Red Sox outfielder who was selected to 19 All-Star Games, won two American League MVP awards, and batted a .406 in 1941, one of the greatest hitting seasons ever. He led the AL in home runs for four times, in batting average six times, and twice won the prestigious Triple Crown Award in 1942 and in 47. Before he was famous, his parents decided to name him after President Teddy Roosevelt. He unfortunately passed away July 5th of 2002 at the age of 83. But an interesting piece of trivia to know about him is, he served three years in the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps during World War II and in the middle of his MLB career from 1943 to 1946. Wow! Happy birthday, Ted Williams! Our next notable figure born today is Warren Buffett. Born August 30th, 1930 in Omaha, Nebraska, this American stock market genius was nicknamed the Oracle of Omaha. He was considered a 20th century's most successful investor. Before he was famous, he worked in his grandfather's grocery store and delivered newspapers. He is one of the wealthiest men in the world and served as a chairman, CEO, and the largest shareholder of Berkshire Hathaway. He turns 91 years old today. Happy birthday, Warren Buffett. Another notable figure born today is Cameron Diaz, born August 30th, 1972 in San Diego, California. This American actress who debuted the 1994 comedy The Mask. She was given a Golden Globe Award nomination for her roles in There's Something About Mary, Being John Malkovich, Vanilla Sky, and Gangs of New York, and played leading roles in Charlie's Angels, Bad Teacher, and The Other Woman. Before she was famous, she modeled for Levi's and Calvin Klein. Between the years of 1988 and 1993, she also voiced the character Princess Fiona in the Shrek film series from 2001 to 2010. Wow! She turns 49 years old today. Happy birthday, Cameron Diaz. An additional notable figure born today is Michael Grant Terry, born August 30th, 1984 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This American actor is best known for his role as Windbell Bray on the long-running Fox drama Bones. He also appeared in episodes of NCIS, Grimm, and Criminal Minds. Before he was famous, he studied drama and cinematography at Boston's Emerson College and was an apprentice at Williamstown Theatre Festival. He turns 37 years old today. Happy birthday, Michael Grant Terry. And another figure that is last but not least is Ryan Ross. Born August 30th, 1986 in Summerlin, Nevada. This former lead guitarist, lyricist, and backup vocalist for the pop-punk band Panic at the Disco. He helped find the young veins after leaving Panic at the Disco. Before he was famous, he and his friends started a garage band called Pet Salamander, in which they covered Blink-182 songs. He turns... 35 years old today. Happy birthday, Ryan Ross. Happy birthday, everyone. Come along, Discovery Learners, as we explore a new place of the week. This week, we are traveling to Singapore. And do you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? Why, yes, that's a Singaporean national anthem. Now as you give that a listen to, let's go ahead and discuss a little further about the Singaporean flag. This nation's flag is horizontally divided, red, white, with a white crescent and five stars on its upper hoist corner. The stripes of red and white stands for universal brotherhood and equality, and also for purity and virtue, resemble those in a number of neighboring countries, including Indonesia, Thailand, and Malaya. 
In the upper host corner was a crescent, which was defined as being a symbolic of the growth of the young country. The crescent framed five stars representing democracy, peace, progress, justice, and equality. This current iteration of Singapore's flag has been in use since August 9, 1965. Wow, pretty interesting flag you got there, Singapore. Now let's go ahead and learn a little more about this country. Singapore is located in Southeast Asia, around the tip of the Malay Peninsula. It's separated from its neighbor, Malaysia, by the Johor Strait, with the South China Sea to its southeast. Singapore's official name is... Republic of Singapore. Its former government is a unitary multi-party republic with one legislative house, the parliament. Its head of state is a president, and its head of government is a prime minister. The capital of Singapore is Singapore, and its official language is Mandarin Chinese, with Malay, Tamil, and English at a close second. The most popular religion in Singapore is... Buddhism, with Christianity and Muslim at a close second. Singapore's main monetary unit is the Singapore dollar. One Singapore dollar equals one US dollar. The current population of Singapore is 5,747,000 people. Singapore has a total area of 279 square miles. That's actually pretty tiny, but still slightly bigger than the U.S. capital of District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. Singapore happens to have one of the busiest seaports in the world, and most of its exports heading towards the U.S. of A. With that being said, its top exports are food and beverages, crude oil, aircraft engines and parts, and passenger cars. Wow, Singapore is a very fascinating place, and I can't wait to teach you more. So be sure you're tuning in all week long as we teach you more about Singapore, here on Ability to Learn. Wow, now that's a really interesting place of the week. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the serval. The serval is a medium-sized cat which lives in Central and South Africa. It prefers wetlands and grasslands, but since it's highly adaptable, it can be found in other types of ecosystems as well. Although servals are eliminated from certain parts of Africa due to hunting and habitat loss, they are not considered endangered animals because of their number in the wild is still high and they form stable populations. Some people keep servals as pets, even though they are wild animals and may hurt them. Here are some interesting facts about servals. Serval has a yellowish to orange coated fur coated in black spots. Body coloration makes them invisible or well camouflaged when they are hiding in the grass. There are no two servals with the same marks on their fur. It's kind of like a fingerprint or a snowflake. Servals are 2 to 3 feet long. Their weight ranges from 20 to 40 pounds. Servals' tail is quite short and covered in black rings. It has a black tip as well. Servals have big ears compared to the rest of the body. And they also have the longest legs in the world of cats. The servals' ear serves as a sort of radar, which easily recognizes sounds produced by moving animals even when they are moving underground tunnels. Along with other senses, their ears help them find the prey quickly. Wow, pretty interesting. Depending on the type of prey which they hunt, servals can hunt both during the day and night. If they are living close to humans, they sometimes hunt domestic animals like chickens. Servals use their sharp claws to catch different types of prey, such as rodents, squirrels, fish, frogs, snakes, and even small birds. Servals are successful hunters. They catch 50% of their prey. Other cat species only have a 10% success rate. They can even catch flying birds. Snatch them right out of the air. That's pretty cool. Servals also have an excellent sense of smell, hearing, and sight, which they use both for finding the prey and avoiding predators. The main predators of servals are humans. 
who hunt them for their fur. There's also leopards, hyenas, and dogs. Due to their long legs, servers are fast runners. They can achieve 45 to 50 miles per hour. Only cheetahs are faster than servals. Servers are solitary animals, which gather only during mating season. Like most other cat species, servers produce wide range of sounds, like high-pitched cries, snarls, growls, they even spit and purr, which are used for communication. A female several is pregnant about 73 days, in which time the female creates a den and gives birth to about 1 to 3 cubs. The cubs are blind at birth and only have 250 grams in weight. They will open their eyes and double their size within two weeks. Young servals drink milk during the first five months of their life. After that period, they will accompany their mother in hunts until they become one years old. And by then, they're capable of solitary life and independent hunting. Oh, they're adorable. Servals live about 10 to 12 years in the wild and 13 years in captivity. The oldest known serval lived to be 23 years old. Wow, that's a long time. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the crocus. The crocus is a plant that belongs to the iris family. There is over 80 different species of crocus that originate from Southern Europe, Central Asia, China, Middle East, and Africa. Crocus lives in the alpine meadows, rocky mountainsides, shrublands, and woodlands. Crocuses tolerate low temperature and cold climates. Beautiful flowers of the crocus often protrude from the snow when these plants live on high altitudes. People started cultivating the crocus about 500 years BC. This plant can be used as spice, medicine, and as a dye. Majority of crocus species are abundant in the wild. Certain species are threatened by habitat loss. Here are some interesting facts about the crocus. Crocus is a small plant that can reach 8 to 12 inches in height. The color of the flower depends on the species. Crocuses are usually yellow, white, mauve, or lilac in color. Crocus has a single cup-shaped flower that arises from a long tube. Flowers composed of six petals. These of the crocus have a sword-like shape and a white central stripe. Crocus has a crom, which serves as an underground storage system. Each year, at the beginning of a new growth season, the new crom develops at the top of the old crom. Saffron is a spice which is derived from the crocus plant. Once dried, saffron is the most expensive spice in the world because one ounce of saffron requires 80,000 plants. All plants are harvested manually. 90% of the world's saffron is produced in Iran. Saffron-based pigment was used to cave art 50,000 years ago. Saffron can be used in the manufacture of perfumes and in medicine. Some studies show that saffron has an antibacterial properties and possible anti-tumor effects. It can improve memory and is often used to alleviate cough, bronchitis, and some forms of stomach ache. Another application of saffron is in textile industry, where it is used for dyeing of fabrics. Certain species of crocus, such as crocus autumnal, is poisonous. Besides being dangerous if consumed, this type of crocus shows greatest tolerance toward low temperatures. Different species of crocus bloom in different parts of the year, but most species will show their beautiful flowers during winter and spring. Crocuses can be pollinated by various types of insects, such as bees, moths, and even beetles. Crocus is a perennial plant, which means parts of the plant above the ground die each year, and a new plant develops from the underground crumb. Crocus can survive more than two years out in the wild. It's that time again. We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. The word of the day. Today's word is stimulus. It is spelled S-T-I-M-U-L-U-S. It's a noun. It means 
a thing or event that evokes a specific functional reaction in an organ or tissue. A thing that arouses activity or energy in someone or something. A spur or incentive. Stimulus. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is camouflage. It's a noun. It means the disguising of military personnel, equipment, and installations by painting or covering them to make them blend in their surroundings. A natural coloring or form of which an animal enables it to blend in with its surroundings. Camouflage. Hola, Discovery Learners. So, y'all, do my estrellas. Hi, Discovery Learners. It is I, your teacher, Liz. Aquí es tu palabra en español de la semana. What that means is, here is your Spanish word of the week. Su palabra para esta semana es... See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. Which means... Chair. See ya. Chair. See ya. Chair. You can use this word in a phrase. Siéntate en la silla. Siéntate en la silla. Siéntate en la silla. Which means, sit in the chair. Siéntate en la silla. Sit in the chair. Siéntate en la silla. Sit in the chair. ¿Cómo se dice chair en español? Silla. Sí, muy bien. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish Word of the Week here on Ability to Learn. Hey Discovery Learners, it's me Andrew Lancaster here, and since we're learning about Singapore, here's some fun films from the East to watch this week. Up first is Anna and the King. This film was made in 1999. It has a rating of PG-13. It's a romantic drama with a 2 hour and 20 minute runtime. It stars Jodie Foster and Chow Young Fat, and you can find it on YouTube. Up next is Mulan. This film was made in 2020. It features a PG-13 rating. It's an action drama with a two hour runtime. It stars Jet Li and Donnie Yen. You can find it on Disney+. Plus. Up next is Wish Dragon. This PG film was made this year of 2021. It's a family comedy with a 1 hour and 38 minute runtime. It stars Jimmy Wong and John Cho and is available on Netflix. This week's action packed cinematic work of art is Kung Fu Panda 2. This film comes from the year 2011. It has a PG rating and it's a family adventure with a 1 hour and 32 minute runtime. It stars Angelina Jolie, Dustin Hoffman, Gary Oldman, Jackie Chan, and is directed by Jennifer Yun Nelson, and music by Hans Zimmer and Jack Black as Poe. You can find it on Netflix. Kung Fu Panda 2 is a spectacular film, and it's only made better with the amazing voice work of Jack Black, who is able to convey real emotion through this animated panda. The film takes place shortly after Poe has become the Dragon Warrior, but now we get to find out about his past while also putting him against a villain who too is a Kung Fu master, who while on his quest to be the greatest tried to wipe out all the pandas to prevent the prophecy. That same prophecy that has said a panda would become the Dragon Warrior. The animation in the film holds up very well, even today. And while the animation is very stylized, the actors breathe a believable life into them, making it a true cinematic work of art. Skadoosh! Now playing at the Discovery Theater this Friday, starting at 1 p.m.
Here's today's interesting fact. Did you know that ancient Egyptians ate marshmallows? It's true! As I stated earlier in today's episode, ancient Egyptians were the first to enjoy the gooey treat now called marshmallows. As early as 2000 BC, the treat was considered very special and reserved for gods and royalty. Marshmallow was made from the mallow plant that grows wild in the marshes, especially around northern Africa and Egypt. So yeah, ancient Egyptians ate marshmallows. Pretty interesting, huh? Aww, we all know what that song means. It means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, or to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified about all the fun we're having at Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program. This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.